So hi, one well, of the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with I'm Chris. I'm Zach. I'm Andrew. And I'm Steven, and we are Plainview. And we're gonna ask them some questions today about their new EP, Nightlife. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about this uh the response to the EP so far? Thank you. It's it's honestly been great. Uh it's it's really refreshing to hear from people outside of, you know, your bubble, like your family and friends and stuff like that that give you serious feedback on it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's been mostly positive. I can't say completely positive cause nothing's perfect, but, um, I'm really happy with the reception. All right. I yeah. couldn't agree more. Hell yeah. The, the sure. piece very, very good. Um, oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Your, your publicist hit the nail on the head with like, uh, for fans of, cause like, I love all those like <laughs> 2000 scene bands. God, the CPU is so good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that's that's the exact vibe we're going for. So thank you so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the EP name or cover art? The name was honestly like we were just trying to think of like something. If we could condense like a vibe into one word, like what we were feeling while writing all this stuff, it's kind of like. You know, spooky stuff comes out in the night. You know, like your your dark stuff in your on the inside comes out at night. And nightlife just kind of made sense. It was kind of thrown out there as a let's see if it sticks, and it stuck. Hell yeah! Hmm. The cover art. Cover art. I think we were just like trying to see if we could get something really like cool and simple. I think we didn't want to overcomplicate it. Yeah, just a super like simplistic like view, honestly. Just like you know, the candle, just like the white backdrop, just anything like super simple, just to convey, just boom. So something kind of like iconic like that. Fair enough. All right. Uh, so can you tell us a little about your writing process for the CP? Um, a lot of it was done remote. Um, I think only one song on the record we wrote in a room together. That yeah. was how much break. Yeah, that was um, one of the first times we ever wrote together in a room. Which is kind of yeah. crazy, yeah. Because, like, <laughs> honestly, the first, um, our first EP, we wrote um, completely remote, honestly, because that was, like, during the um, peak of the pandemic. And, like, all of us would just be together on, like, Zoom meetings. And, like, you know, um, Aaron, for example, who's not here, would be able to, you know, be like, oh, I have this idea. I have this guitar riff. What can we do with this? And um, we had, like, writing sessions just completely over Zoom, which is pretty crazy wow so um yeah most of this record again was written just online and aaron lives in south carolina now and we, we're in michigan so it's <laughs> yeah. kind of the same thing now okay yeah everything's remote um so, so oh i just want to say do you think for your future projects you're going to continue on just doing it remote i know you just said he's he's in a different state but just for the four of you i guess um it's worked so far mm-hmm. so i would assume that we would um i guess if it makes sense and we're all together we we would probably um try to do it together but um it's i i'd like to yeah Yeah, i I think i would like to also but sometimes like you you get in those like weird moments where like i had this idea now i need to get it out now whereas sometimes like i'll i'll be at andrew's place and we're like all right we're gonna write something it's gonna be sweet and we sit down and we get like a chord progression and we're like i hate this this is garbage <laughs> yeah. we're getting rid of this and we're just gonna watch star wars like <laughs> there you go yeah fair enough yeah i have plenty of uh plenty of demos on my computer that i spent hours working on and i'm like this sucks <laughs> oh, no. it's awful. i mean we've all been there i get that yeah yeah, yeah that's i cringe at my stuff that's- that i wrote like 10 years ago on my google drive that i refuse to ever open so oh no you gotta bring it back pit, so yeah no you gotta bring it back yeah Come we on. might have to revisit that just not exactly. yeah yeah uh, so i want you for to tell us your favorite lyric off this ep and the meaning behind it four lyrics each not one lyric oof oh gotta give us a sec to think about that one let me just yeah give, that's a that's uh, a really good sorry question. about that so there's like a lot of different ones that are like <sighs> there's this great like <laughs> this great radio but <laughs> i know errands but i 
<laughs> you don't know your own. <laughs> I won't lie, I'm still learning half the lyrics. I play drums. <laughs> That's fair. I, I respect that. I get that. I get that. Tell me why I'm frantically looking up our lyrics right now. No shame right, I'm doing the same thing. I have them open on my notes. <laughs> no shame in that. <laughs> I guess this actually kind of like brings like a better point. Like unless you're like, um, you know, like one of the vocalists. Okay, Steven, I apologize. This is probably going to like, not look good to you, but it's like, you know, you're so focused on like the things that you're playing, you don't know, like as heavily consider like, you know, for example, the lyrics, you know, for me, yeah. um, the music speaks a little bit more to me, you know, like I have my favorite riffs. I have my favorite like different sections of songs. And to me, that speaks on like a different emotional level than I guess some lyrics would. So Guess there's a little bit of something in there. Um, I, I found mine. Mine. There we go. Mine is gonna be from <laughs> "Feed from You." Uh, it's the first line in the chorus. Objects in mirror are worse than they appear, and I really like that for multiple reasons. Because I, one, I just love the fact that it's a play on the objects in mirror are closer than they appear, and it's just kind of like when when it says like objects are worse than they appear, it's like ah, shit. Like, I literally course. had that lyric pulled up right here. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you guys can have the same favorite lyric. That's okay. Exactly. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> like, shit. Like, it doesn't seem that bad, but when you take a step back, you're like, oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Let's, I remember uh, reading that lyric up. for the first time. And I was like, wow, that. Yeah, like, it made me laugh more than anything yeah. when, I, when I first, like, like, read it written out. I was like, this is, this is sweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What Zach, you, do you know any lyrics? Honestly, I'm reading them right now. I'm a bad person to ask for this question because I wasn't around when the lyrics were written. Um, oh, we, we can flip this this question on the head just a little bit. And if you guys just want to say your favorite part in the song, since Chris brought up a very good point, that's fine too. Yeah, exactly. I guess in a whole, that would actually be, um, to me, like the, uh, the chorus of... Um, the first sip just because to me at least musically like that's just such like a powerful it, it, like more so like the whole song as well but like the chorus in particular like it's just such a powerful combination between like i love the like the melodies and the chorus which steven is singing and like the guitars are going but at the same time the drums are just going at such like a chaotic and like fast rhythm to me it just kind of brings in like and kind of encapsulates this beautiful kind of like craziness that i kind of like it, it, it's like i'm like anything else that i've played live for example mm-hmm. yeah i would say mine is the final chorus of completely lonely i like when we go half time i just really enjoy the feel of that it's a super fun part to play and i feel like there's a lot of emotion in the music in the end of that song yeah i really like the uh the bridge of completely lonely going into that last <laughs> chorus because mm. when we played our set live that's like right in the middle of the set and that's that's kind of like where we realize like if we've won over the crowd or not <laughs> yeah and we that's a good just, point like, we can kind of just coast the rest of the time we're like all right we don't have to stress we can like have fun playing the rest of the show we don't have to like try to win over the crowd at that point mm-hmm. i agree yeah. Yeah, or we have to try well. two times harder yeah right oh, yeah, yeah could, baseline yeah. in there too so Everybody could be standing there like this, just pissed off in the corner. And we're like, yeah. okay, got to go extra hard. Exactly. <laughs> Thankfully, we've not seen that yet, but I'm still waiting. I know it's going to happen. It'll happen. Gonna... It'll happen. It's Every show happen. has the guy, so yeah, exactly. it's going to happen. I am that guy, but I tell you, I'm, I'm having also... a blast. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I am too. I will never judge that guy, person. though. Yeah. I get uh, it, though. I've been that guy I many times. I hate that guy. And I've turned into that guy. Yep. <laughs> we all become who we hate. It's inevitable. It's like Thanos. Yeah. Oh my god. My back won't allow me to be the other guy anymore. Yeah. True. My back, my knees, like I'm. Uh, I can't throw around out. the pit, man. It's not Guys my personality. Young, though. Oh. You're so young. I'm sorry if they're swearing. I don't know if they're. Oh no, you can swear. Good. Okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Good. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like, y'all are just children. Hey man, Grandpa crispy over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, Good old man. So, uh, where is your headspace at while you guys are writing this EP? Ooh, oh, all over the place. 
Oh uh, yeah, all over the place. Cause like we yeah. we had just come right off of releasing another EP, like not not too uh, long after, and it was kind of like we were still pinpointing where we wanted to end up as a band. You know, like we we started making off or started off making music like counterparts, and over time we were just like, okay, this doesn't feel right. Let's like start dipping into our other musical influences, and we kind of all came and rallied around like the early 2000s like like emo pop punk uh alternative music and stuff that we were listening to while learning how to play our instruments and in a way that it kind of like shapes you as a musician differently than just like learning somebody's songs as you already know how to play Mm -hmm. but learning music while you're learning the instrument also like helps you understand the like why they write a certain way too so the fact that we had all of this in common was just completely asinine like i don't i don't understand how it worked but the more and more we got towards this sound of this ep we were kind of like okay yeah this is where we're we're at this is where we're gonna be Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah like like steven said we started off like heavier like hardcore like counterparts and then, like, slowly it came out that, like, none of us were, like, that into that. <laughs> yeah. We were all we like, started... yeah, we really like singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally after the first demo, we were like, why weren't we doing this from the start? Like, this is really good. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> so a little side note, me and Steven have been in bands for years together. <laughs> and at the time of the formation of Plainview, he and I were doing, like, kind of like a early 2000s alternative kind of rock uh, project and he was singing in it and I remember demoing Plainview music or recording like maybe the first two Plainview songs and we were like hey check this out we just worked on this we were showing the other guys and our producer at the time was like one year's time you guys won't be screaming anymore (laughs) yeah (laughs) not not even a year later he was right. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he called it. He did he really did. Uh, so, how do you recommend your fans to listen to this EP for the first time? Should they play it in the car with friends? Start with headphones on? Should they blast it at a party? Work out to it? Do homework to it? What do you guys personally recommend? Oh, honestly, like to me at least, I don't think there's like a, I don't think there's like one right way to do it. Like, um. However, it's like, you know, every, everyone's like a little bit different. Like, you know, for me, at least, like, I prefer like a nice long car ride. It's just me and EP and however long I'm going. But um, like for this one in particular, I think it's just like you kind of just sit down, <laughs> do what you normally do and just like have it on there. And if it speaks to you, then just give it a listen. I like that answer. Um, so this question should be super, super quick off the top of your head. I want you to describe this EP for new listeners in three words, no more, no less all four. You have to do it. Getting there. <laughs> and these are hard questions. <laughs> okay. So I got describe mine. The, EP, the whole, the EP in its entirety in three um, words. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I would say sad, energetic, but also melancholy. Okay. Damn, you took two of my three. <laughs> oh my god! Stop it. We're, see, we're like a hive mind. This we can't do things like this. I was like, oh no, one's gonna say melancholy. That's just such an out there word. <laughs> you were gonna I say know. melancholy. I, I was gonna melancholy. say energetic. <laughs> Same. Stop oh, it, gosh, you guys. Get some help. <laughs> god. Uh, well, definitely sad because. We need like a group therapy session. It's really sad. Yeah. I, I, I want to say like bouncy. There's a lot of bouncy songs. Mm-hmm. In it. That's a good word. Um, I suppose. Can I hyphenate a word? Can I say yeah. self reflective? Mm-hmm. There that's you go. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Oh, that's, I that's would say nice introspective. Mm-hmm. Wow. Big that's word. a good one. That's, that's better. Um. <laughs> I just want to make sure I understood that. <laughs> You're Googling what introspective means. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to pick some others, because again, like again, my other two have been stolen right from under me, so. Yeah. <laughs> we'll allow you to keep one of those words if you'd like. Thank you. Keep my melancholy. 
Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Zach, do you have any? Um, I mean, the only one I can think of is emotional, but that kind of that's like good actually. Yeah, that, that is good. That is good. Zach doesn't know words. <laughs> you know what? I guess like one word I could throw out and like, and I hate that I have to say this, but I mean like technically it is a little true. Um, vintage. Just because, like, again, it's like, as much as I hate to admit, like, early 2000s were about 20 years ago, Mm -hmm. as much as that makes me want to throw up. So it's like, kind of like that uh, vibe we're going for. But I guess it is kind of like a vintage feel, in a way, for like us elder emo. So say like throwback to the TikTok generation, it's vintage. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. 2005. (laughs) Zach, you have two. You want to try and get one more? Um. I'm bad with words. Come um, on, you just one. You have to sun. One. I mean, you could use sad. I know everybody else has used that, but that's kind of like. Right, well, we need a new one. Yeah, Hell we'll yeah. take it. I, yeah, it you doesn't matter. No, that doesn't count. That doesn't what? count. No, no, no. <laughs> no don't like pressure him. Sure. Don't pressure him. Exactly. I mean, you could use the word hype because we do have some songs that really get up Ooh, there. Okay, there, there, we go. Go. there we go. There we go. That's what I like. See? Hell yeah. Look Good at that. Choice. Perfect. Good job, team. So. <laughs> 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 Is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this EP to invoke in your listeners? I guess I'll take the easy, I'll take, I'll take the low hanging fruit. Um, I'd say nostalgia. You mm-hmm. bastard. Damn it, Chris. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't guys, feel so good, does it? You guys don't all have to have the same answer or different answers to this one. You can, you can all agree. Yeah, you yeah. can all agree. Okay, yeah, nostalgic. Nostalgia. Um, I feel like yeah, Andrew's going to come at us with a wild card. Right? Yeah. I don't even want to hear it. I'm trying Mute to him. think of the right word to describe Leave her head, it. though. You got this. Solace. Solace. Okay. Yeah. You want to elaborate on that at all? Or... Yeah. Like, no, I'm not going to elaborate. <laughs> 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 um, no, just feeling comfort that, like, everybody's kind of going through the same things. Like, yeah. All right, fair enough. I like it. So picture this: you're on tour at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Oh, that's a good one. Beef jerky. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. Are we talking teriyaki, black pepper, any kind, any kind of beef jerky? (laughs) Teriyaki. Teriyaki. It's teriyaki every time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there we go. It's a. Google it just because I was like, oh, I got it right. Um, the Fritos Flavor Twist Honey Barbecue. Those things are legendary. That's very specific. Those sound, Those sound good. I admire that. I'm yeah. not a fan. I'm basic. I'm you a say you're not a fan? fan? Those kind of guys. I'm a corn nut fan. <laughs> All I heard was corn nut. Corn nut. Fan. Corn yeah. nut. I didn't know people actually <laughs> ate those. <laughs> yeah, they're good. They're good. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever I'll have to one? take your word on that. I. I'm <laughs> learning more than you guys are from this. <laughs> Wait, Zach. What was your yeah. What was your snack? I said I'm basic. I like nacho cheese Doritos. There you go. Dang. I like. Okay, them. listen. They're they're good. Good. But those are a yeah. staple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ig- ignore the elderly <laughs> man in here. <laughs> Once told him his favorite candy is Werther's. <laughs> Werther's is good. I I Thank like Werther's. Yeah, yeah. As I long as it's not the soft ones. Those are those are kind of sus. Yeah, that's like no. my grandma's purse. Like <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Your grandma's cool. Exactly, your grandma's or, like, base. Room temperature. She <laughs> preheats them. It's that good shit. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so, on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be? Andrew, if your take sushi. is bad, I don't want to hear it. Sushi, I, that's good. <laughs> sushi. I would actually say, because honestly, that... like half of like all of our music was written on sushi. So Yeah, Zach, okay. you don't get a say. Zach doesn't like sushi. I don't know if I'm pointing in the right corner on your guys' screen, but this is the right corner <laughs> on my that, screen. Yeah. Listen, you're you po- don't like sushi. <laughs> you're pointing at Andrew on my screen, <laughs> and yeah. I, I agree with you. At He's Andrew. not to talk to. <laughs> yeah, this guy. This I feel guy, like I'm in the Brady Bunch right now. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyone else want to chime in or it's either um, that or some kind of thai food i think because okay. again like most of our music was written uh, on some kind of Pets either like you. sushi had see you i had see you maybe a burger or two but yeah oh, all right fat daddies 
Detroit oh, Fat oh, Daddies. Fat Daddies. Oh fat daddies my god. <laughs> the best chicken in the world yep. is from Fat and Daddies. Here, I'm gonna I'm going to plug this location. Give me one second. Hold on. <laughs> Seriously right. though, like no joke, okay. every single plain view song that was recorded. Fat Daddy's um, Hot Chicken and Waffles restaurant in Riverview, Michigan. The best chicken you will ever eat in your entire life. Hit them up for a sponsorship. It's always on the endorsement, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for the last couple of questions, we can shift away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? All you can eat buffet and I'll just never stop. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you're living forever. What are you drinking? Well, what, what's your... Um, Apple water? I'm drinking... Passion fruit LaCroix. Oh, uh, there you go. Wait, wait, why are you laughing? That's a good, that's good. This man did an awesome is... amount of passion fruit LaCroix. Yeah. LaCroix you would be scared amazing. if you saw how much LaCroix he drinks. <laughs> a case a day at least. This, this okay, static I water that. shit. For okay. me, that's for what me it would have to be <laughs> some, some sort of Mexican dish. That's my favorite type of food ever. And then for my drink, it would have to be a gin and tonic. All right. Oh, I could go for a G and T right about now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, on the topic of stealing, uh, stealing answers. <laughs> my drink, spoiler, would be a gin and tonic. Okay. My food okay. would be a pad siu Thai dish. It's just so good. I'm like a, I'm just a total slut for the nudes. I love <laughs> nudes. Okay. I know, you know. You're not the first person to describe that they're a slut for a type of food. For a type of food, yeah. It blows me away every so single time that no, people use that does. terminology when talking about food. So good. <laughs> I would say Indian butter chicken and Dr. Pepper. Okay. There you go. Oh, wow. yeah. yep. right. Speak my language. That's, that's bussin' bussin', respectfully. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. like a recipe for heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm on death row, I don't care. Don't worry. We, exactly. Between yeah. all of us, dessert, we have enough know. Tums to last us a lifetime. Love that. Okay. <laughs> Van's got to be stocked. Exactly. Exactly. Seriously, on tour, like we're going to be having like probably like an entire crate of tums. It's yeah, going to be. That's kind not of a joke. Insane. Get that sponsorship. Not, Get that exactly, sponsorship. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Heartburn. They have like Kit Kat <laughs> containers of tums. It's going to be oh, crazy. What did I just kick? Oh my god. The nightlife oh. tour sponsored by Tums and Lacroix. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's, that's a dream. dream. That's That'd a be dream. amazing. Yeah. Right. So, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Um, I would say Hogwarts. What house are you? I don't know. I haven't taken the quiz in such Come a Come on! I'm actually re-watching it. I haven't watched it in, like, since it came out, which mm -hmm. I was so young when I came, or when it came out, so, like, re-watching oh, it now, I'm noticing so much. When I came out, I was very young when I came out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's such a tough question, man. Oh, I would man. like to live on Tatooine. Why? Well, the, <laughs> nothing's on Tatooine. You get two well, the, stones, That's it. The the that's the exactly city why. that the, the the city with Boba Fett oh, is on Tatooine. That's yeah, that is wild. So, it's just calm and nothing. Nothing exactly. but sand. There you go. I feel I like the Marvel universe, but I also feel like I'd just be some random civilian, so everything would be scary. So. <laughs> Assuming I had the power of the Marvel Universe, if okay. I'm just a civilian, hell no. <laughs> yeah. All right, fair enough. I'd I'd probably choose Coruscant because I'd I'd go see the Jedi Temple. Uh -huh. Oh. And then and then like probably get some bus and street food. It's like some Gnostics. alien frogs and worms or something. Yeah, some milk from some sort of creature. <laughs> It'd probably know? be good though. It's gotta be blue milk though. Yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> so I've always looked thick. Oh. <laughs> Thick blue milk. Right, it's just <laughs> Very uh, viscous. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I have the honor of asking the last question, and every single person who's spoken to have said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Purple. Blue. Blue. Purple. Solid. <laughs> is the most important question. Thank you. It is. Um, so what as about I you guys? Black. Yellow or red. It's kind of a, you know, okay. Okay. seesaw. That's cool. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, so as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you guys like to plug? Our new EP, music. Nightlife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Streaming now. Um, <laughs> we, yeah, we just put out a live music video for the first mm-hmm. sip also, filmed at uh, the Crowfoot with the show we play with our buddies in Unwell. Um, Glimmers was there, too. They were dope. That's a, that was a dope lineup, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're playing Incarceration Festival in Ohio. That's, in that's sick. Yeah. Papa Roach and Sleeping with Sirens. And... Oh, Sleeping with Sirens, that's good. And oh, Papa others. Roach. I'm, no. I'm Not excited. <laughs> Corn's playing, too. I there you go. fucking the love Corn. Corn. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, I'm going to lose my mind. Oh, Spirit Box, too. Spirit, Spirit Box. Okay, okay. so yeah. why did you lead with Papa Roach? <laughs> why not? And Papa Box? Roach is the Cause best cause band on that lineup. The same day as Spirit Box. It doesn't matter. It's the days. festival. Exactly. It's the same festival. Bro, they're all three days. <laughs> We're gonna be there like the whole Papa weekend. Roach. Yeah, but Papa Roach, man, <laughs> Papa Roach is banging, dude. No! Glory, I'm sorry that you don't like Papa Roach, but I hate Papa. Roach. We love Papa Roach here. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what she sounds like when we talk about Papa Roach on the podcast. Too. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> they suck. Um, so. I- <laughs> <laughs> so as i said oh fuck um i already said that. it's very hard to have a serious conversation with us it's yeah. not you guys it's I us apologize. Yeah. this is fun it's, good. it's, it's not good. me it's you uh, well thank you for now this guy's been plain view and we have been the good noise podcast